Welcome to the Tennessee Community Engaged Alliance Against COVID-19 Wellness Wednesday show, also known as TNCL Wellness Wednesday. I'm Dr. Catherine Y. Brown, your host. Now, more than ever, we must stay informed and engaged about the COVID-19 pandemic in Tennessee. Our communities, Nashville, Memphis, and surrounding areas must increase our understanding of the factors that contribute to the disproportionate burden of COVID-19 in underserved communities of Tennessee. Throughout our conversations on this show, we have been introducing you to thought leaders that are establishing effective community-engaged strategies that are aimed to increase knowledge, awareness, testing, and vaccine readiness as they begin to address structural inequities and COVID-19 disparities. Today, it is with much excitement that I introduce to you with us. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Can you tell us about yourself and some of your accomplishments? And let me preface by saying you have quite a few accomplishments, but just let our viewers know a little bit about you. Oh, thank you so much. Well, um, I am a pharmacist and I hail from Memphis, Tennessee. I attended Xavier University in Louisiana. And I completed my PharmD there in 2004. And upon completion, I returned to Memphis to serve the Memphis community. Um, started out in specialty and I loved it. And um, I work at a specialty mail order pharmacy. And I've been there, it'll be 17 years in July. I know, yes, I feel like I'm old. <laughs> And um, also during that time, I've worked in institutional hospital pharmacy. Um, right now, like I said, I'm in the specialty field is, you know, still and I work uh, within what we call purchasing pharma, pharma contracts. I've worked, you know, within fulfillment. But right now I kind of have a desk job and I, I'm lucky to work from home. Believe it or not, most people have never met a pharmacist that works from home, but I am one of them. I love it. I love it. And that's absolutely amazing. And I love that you said that because someone may be interested in the career of pharmacy and all the possibilities. So you have just enlightened us all. <laughs> Can you tell us about your work with the COVID-19 vaccine in the community? And also just include how that's different from you as you share it working from home. Right. So um, as I stated, you know, I work within a mail order pharmacy and um, we do ship, you know, medications to our patients. We currently do not um, dispense or ship the vaccine and we do not administer the vaccine to patients. Um, I have nev never administered the vaccine to anyone, but I still am an advocate, you know, within the pharmacy community. One of the things that, you know, I pride myself on, I'm one third of a podcast that is health based. It is three pharmacists, three female pharmacists. And we all graduated from Xavier University. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is, you know, making sure that the community is aware of uh, different things that are going on with the vaccine right now, with receiving um, your vaccination. And of course, you know, this is a day to day thing that updates. So we just want to keep our followers and our listeners aware of all the different things that we're hearing out there that sometimes may not be true. And just to keep everyone, you know, aware of what's truth, what's facts, um, what is hearsay. And, you know, basically your pharmacist is your advocate. Your pharmacist is Absolutely. one of the, the most um, accessible healthcare providers that you have. You can go to your pharmacist, um, drive to your pharmacy, talk to your pharmacist. You can call them up usually if they have time to get you know right on the phone with you or they can call you back. But, um, you know, being a pharmacist, that's one thing, like I said, I pride myself on is being an advocate for those in our community that may not be able to you know run to the doctor as fast as possible, but maybe can run to the Walgreens a little bit you know, quickly or, you know, like I said, listening to our podcast. If you have questions, you know, we would love to hear them, things like that. 
And I'll give you all the podcast information in just a little you know, while. That's my next question. So <laughs> I was with you, and I, that was my next question was like, you cannot tell us about this amazing podcast and all the resources. I, I want people to hear it right now. So my next question was going to be, how can we keep ourselves healthy against the COVID-19 virus? But I guess if we log into this podcast, we're going to get that answer as well. So tell us your podcast information. Do not keep us in suspense. I won't. <laughs> healthy. You said three female podcasts. I, Xavier graduates. We are ready for that information and we're going to put it in the chat below. Okay, wonderful. I, you know, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Catherine, for letting me uh, speak about the podcast. It is called Three Friends Talk, the number three friends talk. And like I said, it's three female pharmacists, three black female pharmacists. Um, we started out in pharmacy school. We're, we are close friends and we decided that we wanted to bring a platform um, you know, that's accessible to all. It's on all pharmacy, it's on all podcast platforms. And, you know, just to have question, question and answers, healthcare questions, and also a little bit of girl talk. So, you know, it's, it's not just I'm so, signing up today. I have to sign up. I'm going to sign it, and we are all signing up. So, this is great. Tell us now, tell us this. Um, and for those who didn't get a chance to see the podcast yet, how do we keep ourselves healthy? Virus. Right. Great question. So, um, one, you know, no, one thing, you know, besides just being, you know, vaccinated, um, we do want to continue to heed all the health, you know, the precautions. We want to continue to wash our hands, like, you know, we heard so much last year in 2020. It is a different year, but we still have to do the same thing. We don't want to wash our hands. We want to make sure that we're wearing our mask. We want to make sure that we are still distancing ourselves. Um, we don't know everyone's status. We don't know who's vaccinated. We don't know um, who has, you know, is still going out and are having symptoms. So we do want to continue to do the same things that we were doing in 2020. In 2020. Um, and, and, you know, taking your vitamins daily, you know, making sure that you're eating um, a well-balanced, mm -hmm. you know, diet, fruits, vegetables, um, ensuring that you're getting out, getting fresh air, exercise. You know, it's, it's a whole thing other than just taking medicine all the time. You know, we want to make sure that our whole lifestyle um, is in accordance with making ourselves healthy and keeping ourselves healthy. Um, if you, you know, if you're vaccinated, make sure that you're taking your other vaccines. Make sure you're getting, that you're getting your flu shot. Make sure that you're getting your pneumonia shot. Make sure that your all your vaccination records are up to date, um, as well as that you're you know going and seeing your healthcare provider on a regular basis, checking your blood pressure, um, you know all all those different things that we hear on a regular basis. We just want to make sure that we're keeping up with all of that. So you actually hit so many different things in in what you just shared with us. So what should communities do to get vaccine ready? You talked about just being vaccine ready on so many levels, but particularly when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine, what should communities do to get vaccine ready? So like I said, my, my biggest thing is have an advocate out there. Um, if it's, you know, your pharmacist, if it's your, um, the doctor that you see on a regular basis, uh, make sure that you're having candid conversations with them. Make sure that you're doing your research to find out, okay, is this for me? Because it definitely is a decision for you and your household. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you're current as, as far as who's eligible for the vaccine. You know, the, mm -hmm. the ages are starting to change. And for the Pfizer vaccine, we know that 16-year-olds um, and mm -hmm. older can receive it. And, you know, I'm sure that some of the other vaccines may be soon to follow. So just, you know, keep up with that type of information um, as far as research. Um, and, you know, if you've had reactions to other vaccines, of course, talk to your healthcare provider to see mm -hmm. if, um, you know, if you are eligible and if this is a good thing for you to do or when it's a good thing for you to go and get vaccinated. Sometimes it may not be the best thing to do it right now. But maybe later on down the line, it will be, you know, more in your favor. Um, another thing that I'll touch on, just because I've had the personal experience, I'm fully vaccinated. And a month or so later, it was time for me to do my mammogram, to go in for my mammogram. And that's one of the first questions they asked me, you know, have you been vaccinated? Because 
um, that's one procedure that it possibly can show, um, you know, your lymph nodes may enlarge because of the vaccine and the location where you received it. So you want to make sure that you know, um, you know, if you have any procedures coming up, most of them are fine. You know, you can go ahead and do dental work and things like that. But mm -hmm. mammogram is one of them that you, if you do have that coming up, you do want to let them know um, that if you've been vaccinated or if you plan to be vaccinated. So, um, you know, basically just staying informed, uh, making sure you have the, the right information, making sure that your information is accurate. Um, I check the CDC website regularly because yeah. it changes so often. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, just when we're talking about it on the podcast, we things have changed since December when we first started talking about it. So mm -hmm. it, it it is something that we have to research on a regular basis. I like that you mentioned that because part of the conversation is staying informed and engaged with credible resources. Right. So like you, trusting and having a conversation with not only your provider, but with the pharmacist and staying aware uh, and up to date with that CDC uh, information is all you know, coming out. And now we know about your podcast in addition to uh, TNCO.org website. So I love that you said that because as things keep changing, what it looked like last year is not what it looks like today. So we do have to continue right. to educate ourselves. So thank you for the work that you're doing and really for your service because you are actually providing a service to the community. So with that being said, uh, in your own words, what does community mean to you, Dr. Miller? Oh, okay. So let's talk about community. Let's talk about community. <laughs> um, and I, I think I keep circling back to the same word, advocate. Uh, yes. Community is, is basically having um, several advocates, you know, in your disposal. An advocate can be a family member, an advocate can be um, a friend, it could be a neighbor, whoever is there that you can trust, whoever is there that is, has been helpful for you. Um, that's what community means to me, is having someone who's always, you know, in your corner and you know, I'll bring it back to pharmacists. You know, we always, you know, we're a very accessible, very available, and, um, a, you know, a very uh, straightforward part of your community that you can always reach, reach and have someone to listen to you whenever needed. So that's definitely the biggest thing for community for me is having um, an advocate and helping each other. And this platform that you bring to us, Dr. Catherine, once again, you know, just like I was stating earlier, having someone and having a place that you can go and listen to and um, have these candid conversations. This is what community means to me. Absolutely, and, and thank you, thank you for that. Uh, so you talked about so many ways to maintain our health during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with our viewers on maintaining health during a pandemic? And you've talked about quite a few things. <laughs> uh, basically, you know, like I said, um, we are, in this age now where we have the vaccine available, yes. um, having that conversation with your provider or your pharmacist or whoever, you know, okay. um, you know that it's available, that it's, it's giving that information. Just make sure that you're doing that. Um, I wasn't comfortable at first. <laughs> you know, I will be, you know, the first to say it. Yeah. Uh, but after doing my research and realizing, you know, the impact that it makes on my lifestyle, on not only just me, but my family as well, my friends, uh, wanting to get back to uh, some sense of normalcy, you know, mm -hmm. was the reason that I said, you know, I need to look more into this and see, um, you know, is this something for me and for my family? My son is 15 years old and I can't wait for him to turn 16 so that he can receive the vaccine. Well, look, there you have it, everyone. You've heard it first from Dr. Miller. Uh, community, education, advocacy, and really that vaccine readiness and education and being part of the community. And what I love about you, Dr. Miller, is that you're also sharing it from your own perspective. That first you had questions, you educated yourself, and then now as you continue to monitor the, the data and the research, looking forward to that opportunity for your own family member. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I could talk to you all day because you know we have. So <laughs> I enjoy being with you. And here's my last question for you. Yes. Is there anything else that you would like to share? 
Oh, well, <laughs> I'll take this moment, you know, like I said, to thank you for bringing me to uh, your platform. I really appreciate it. I love um, to educate, love to people. People love to ask me questions and talk to me. So thank you so much for bringing me on your platform. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to share my podcast information. When, like I said, it's three, the number three friends talk. Um, and it's on all um, podcast platforms. And actually, we, are, we also do a Facebook Live on Wednesday evening. So we'll be live tonight on our page at um, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time and 9 Eastern Standard Time. So, Tell us uh, the page. Is it the same Three Friends Talk or is it different? It's Three Friends Talk. Okay, so you heard it. Three Friends Talk. You can check out the podcast and also on Wednesday evening. So you got Wellness Wednesdays, midday, and then at night, you can check out Three Friends Talk. I'm excited about it. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Catherine. Thank you. And thank you for being here for all that you do. We truly appreciate you. And just know, once you come on TNCL Wellness Wednesdays, once your family, and that means we have to have you back again. I will do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Miller. For our viewers around the world, I invite you to join me back next Wednesday for TNCL Wellness Wednesdays. You don't want to miss an episode and be sure to share this message. Until next time, stay informed, stay healthy, and share this message with your community. Have a great day.